two decades ago they used to say six degrees of separation be you know between you know any other individual you want to connect on the planet uh, you are only six people away from them uh, but in a very deeply connected world imagine how far you are you are you know probably separated by one to two degrees that's it even though it may seem like i have done many things i have only one done one thing throughout my career it's if you understand the game of basketball it's assists right so one of the key metrics that they track in uh, professional nba especially is uh, the number of times you have set up your teammate for success uh, for them to score a easy basket and uh, that's all i have done in my career in sports if you are a high performing athlete you know diet is an extremely important part of it now you switch over to corporations or organizations where you have high performing people but you don't treat them like high performing athletes Hello and welcome to Switching Gears, the talk show that traces the journey of business leaders and entrepreneurs, uncovering their experiences, their successes and failures to inspire millions of youngsters, startup founders and business professionals. I'm your host Subodh Kumar and today we have with us Ram Mohan Bhopalan, a man of multiple talents. and presently serving as a mentor and advisor to a number of known startups in the APAC Ram welcome to switching gears we are thrilled to have you with us thank you subodh thank you so much for inviting me here So let's start with your professional journey as i found it fascinating often we see individuals and we hear from a lot of people making a single career transition can be daunting and you have done it not once but thrice you started as a professional basketball player then you moved into public service later on you pivoted your career into the corporate world as a human resources leader and then you went on to take the plunge into entrepreneurial world could you take us through your journey and the decision making process behind it after having played basketball professionally for about 7 and 1/2 years i joined customs and uh, um, i took a 2 year break and uh, wanted to go for my masters and uh, the interviewer had uh, they they only asked me two questions and the first one was you are a, a basketball player um working in electronic data processing in in uh, customs and uh, but you you graduated in uh, history and you are uh, uh, tra- i'm also a trained bharatanatyam dancer so how does this social science institute and the program that we offer you know come into the picture so what came to my mind at that time was i recall the pascal's quote where uh, he said uh, the heart has its reasons which reason doesn't know of and uh, i have done many different things but uh, at this point in time i think uh, this is the right thing i want to do even though it may seem like i have done many things i have only one done one thing throughout my career it's if you understand the game of basketball it's assists right so one of the key metrics that they track in uh, professional nba especially is uh, the number of times you have set up your teammate for success uh, for them to score a easy basket mm-hmm. and uh, that's all i have done in my career be it what i have done on the basketball court at the workspace as a leader in hr or much later on in working with startups right i love helping uh, set up people for success teams for success organizations for success and uh, and i work backwards from there Thanks for sharing it with us and I love the fact how you were able to find the commonality across these varying professions. I must ask you there are common aspects but when we look into these three different professions the sports and then the office work and then the entrepreneurial work that you are doing now how did you prepare yourself because i'm sure the mindset wise there must be a big switch that you need to do even though skill wise like you said it's all about helping others it's all about team work in very short a, lo- a series of long failures until you succeed <laughs> right so a great example is how i started playing basketball i've been playing basketball ever since i remember right so as a kid but i was terrible at it uh, not a very athletic chap that's how i grew up the moment i got a mentor in my life 
he was not a coach just a mentor somebody i could speak to and the moment i found somebody i could speak to in a matter of 6 months from a nobody i got into the state team state team into the national championships we won the gold medal it was a powerful quote in a book by stephen covey i was reading where he says you cannot play with the animal in you without um, becoming an animal okay you cannot play with falsehood without forfeiting your right to truth and he says you are the one who wants to preserve a, a garden does not reserve a plot for weeds and it sort of put reality to my face i had high ideals high aspirations and uh, i got up from my seat and i said uh, uh, there's an emergency i have to go so i kept extending my leave and then i went on a two year sabbatical to tiss so so that's the second inflection point of you know uh, getting out of your government career you know you are set right so life very few people leave so i moved i moved first into a staffing company for a brief while and then moved into a a, a captive setup and an analytics business and and then expanded my portfolio into other support businesses um all in hr leadership roles So this was also a time where I invested a lot of time with uh, my business leaders because you know in a far even though you're in a large organization people are going faster a lot of people will hit a glass ceiling so I spent a good amount of time uh, doing executive coaching kind of work on helping people expand their horizon break through the glass ceiling that they are hitting upon um so so th- that's something uh, those are times where I um in those in the all the three organizations i had worked i had slowly evolved a framework for helping people succeed and uh, uh once i thought i had nailed the framework in terms of how i can make people succeed that's all i wanted to do in life right so i didn't want uh, the rest of the you know uh frills associated with uh running a large organizations uh, function and that's why i decided okay so maybe now is a good time for me to step out and become an independent consultant who offers only this as a niche uh, offering in the marketplace and i helped other startups in bangalore and one of them was going through an accelerator in singapore and that's how i got exposed to the ecosystem in singapore and i figured okay uh, if i'm going to be uh, headquartered at singapore is a great place to be at. So that's been my journey so far. So right now I consult in the marketplace um and I offer a, a set of offerings you know based on the needs of the clients. Um if it's a early stage startup I offer a pay as you go service as a CHRO. Uh I also offer um uh leadership interventions on managing stress specifically uh, among leaders. um we call it uh, stress at my feet um uh, where i basically take them out for a walk and this is not a normal walk so it's it's transformational um uh, in terms of the way we engage with each other and the kind of idea uh, experience that they get um so that they expand their horizons in managing stress uh, teams invite me for lunch um in sports if you are a high performing athlete you know diet is an extremely important part of it now you switch over to corporations or organizations where you have high performing people but you don't treat them like high performing athletes right mm-hmm. so your diet in at work uh you know leaves a lot to be desired so so invite me for lunch and uh, you know with your team and then we strike up a conversation i bring my own food and uh, leads to some very interesting um insights on how do you raise your game in in terms of performance so these are some of the things i do i also have a early stage uh, uh, healthcare venture going on where we are looking at uh, disrupting the healthcare business model if you understand any saas offering uh, um if you as a customer are not successful in using the product uh, they give you money back right now imagine a doctor or a hospital giving you your money back because the treatment was not successful have you ever heard of that interesting yeah. indeed so i i see that human resources and making people successful has been a key and integral part of your career so if we deep dive into that a little bit uh, 
बेस्ड ऑन योर एक्सपीरियंस वट वुड यू से मेक्स एन इंडिविजुअल सक्सेसफुल वेदर इट्स अ कॉर्पोरेट सेटअप whether it's professional sports or an entrepreneurial world well i can answer this in multiple ways so uh, it depends on who it is right so um the way i found my mentor was we just you know we just crossed paths and then it clicked right so in the in the instance of basketball but i think i should share the story of my sister right so that's much more powerful and interesting because when i used to be in chennai and she had just ma- passed her masters in um hr again and uh, moved to uh, chennai um we didn't have too much connections you know very uh, starting at the at the base she said uh, i need a mentor who i can speak to those day i'm talking 96 97 right and she said uh, one of the things she did was um she picked up the um telephone directory and then the biggest name those days we used to look up to was the election commissioner t n sesh so she said okay i want to talk to him so she picked up the directory found his number and made the call okay and then she said uh, sir uh, i need to talk to you uh, okay what about and why uh, well i need some advice he said okay come over and that started once she went and met him and it started a relationship and then you know uh, every year they kept in touch until you know he passed away you know quite a few years ago now i didn't think it was possible right uh, because there are many people uh, we look up in the marketplace you know you see them in the newspapers on television and we think they are beyond our reach and one of the the number one thing i learned from my sister was that there is no such thing okay if they are there your job is to reach out whether it works out they take to you that's all uh, uh, you know your job is to make that effort okay but now you think about it how many people because of their self talk tell themselves na that's not going to happen right so i don't think i will give it a shot so 99.9% of the time people are missing that opportunity so you can pick and choose there is nobody who is beyond your reach two decades ago they used to say six degrees of separation be you know between you know any other individual you want to connect on the planet uh, you are only six people away from them uh, but in a very deeply connected world imagine how far you are you are you know probably separated by one to two degree that's it and this reminds me of uh, when i went to b school one of the first case studies that i was given that was an article about stop holding yourself back so in nutshell the lesson i am gaining from this discussion is that nothing is impossible all we need is to make the first attempt just go out of uh, kind of uh, shed those boundaries that we sometimes define artificially so if we further the conversation sometimes those boundaries you are not defining yourself but there are some real boundaries that tend to become or materialize in an organization and what i'm referring to is we here and we have seen ourselves in many organizations there tend to be inner circles that get formed due to certain affiliations for example it could be gender it could be shared alma mater or ethnic backgrounds and many times such inner circles can become detrimental to talented individuals growth so if i am an individual who is not finding myself as part of one of these circles or if i am finding myself excluded in a larger organizational setup what advice would you give being a human resources leader being a startup advisor how can one navigate through such organizational politics and break through such inner circles i think those those things are good they are not bad things okay so what you are saying is these uh, inner circles that are forming that's how we all get together right between you and me we will try to find a common ground and then connect at that level right imagine if we don't do that right so we probably given that we have always 
we started as tribes first right so and then expanded in you know from a society point of view so those are good things okay when it does become detrimental if only if the organizational culture okay only rewards certain tribes that operate within the organization you cannot stop that from happening okay but there is a way in which uh, you um you actively practice your culture so that that's a non issue um so people always confuse between leadership and politics right the only difference is if you do play this game in your self interest then it's negative but if you do the same game for the benefit of others your team your organization your industry it's all positive i know you are an entrepreneur and you are advising a bunch of startup founders and in the startup world taking charge of your destiny is the must have i mean there is no choice so reflecting on your experience what would you say what makes a great startup founder i don't think uh, there is only one type of people who can make it okay in fact uh, the moment you say you know this uh, you put them in a box you will have uh, you know hundreds of other types of people who can make it however i will say this um the rising tide raises all boats okay so if you are planning going to be a startup founder okay the tide matters right so on what kind of uh, industry you are wearing in what kind of uh, opportunity many of those factors will have a role to play right that's why uh, people with poor uh, startup founder material will find themselves in a in a in a situation where they are at the helm and then it's going well everything is going well right why because the tide is rising and the opposite is also true even if you are the best you know startup founder uh, with sharp acumen you know um, everything you you pitch people give you the money you have the chops technical chops you name it they have it uh, 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 let's say the even the uber founder was a great example for that right but if you remember he went through the grind before uber okay for years right um, but once you hit a rising tide then you take off okay so what i would question it is um irrespective of who you are okay i would not force you into a into a peg or a hole um i would say uh, there is nobody i know who cannot become a founder of their own destiny specifically for startup founders if you know the industry in which you are going to operate i would highly recommend you go to intelligence. um uh, we forum.org and uh, um you have some amazing drill down in terms of uh for this particular industry what are the key aspects that you need to factor in and then you know drill down on it it will it's a sort of a mental, uh, mind map okay you can you can work on because as founders we are we are often blind sided by our own insights right so we are so uh, clear about a certain set of things but many things we are not aware of right so so you can there are tools available uh, like this one which you can start looking into and then uh, you your ability to predict the future improves and we have seen there are individuals who already have made up their mind that yes i want to do something on my own but are not able to take the final plunge due to certain fears due to self doubt or maybe they are just waiting for the right time what would you advise to such professionals how could they decide or rather build a conviction in themselves that i am ready to take the plunge and pursue my own what do you mean by plunge uh, you can start while you have a job nothing stopping you from starting it on the side today you know um, over the weekend you should start get it done right there is no excuse for not taking the plunge while you have a job it's the safest thing you can do you name an industry okay uh, there are the more than one ways in which one way in which you can do that uh, if it's a marketplace business let's say okay the playbook for how to execute that it's already written okay you don't need to go and uh, reinvent the wheel right there is no no innovation that is happening right you are 
your unique application of the idea uh, okay is yours but how to build it out how to run it it's all there that support is all there yeah the reason why i say that is see your competition is not somebody else or the big big guys or the small guys your real competition is against time right so uh, so you are competing if you leave your current job and you are starting off then you have a fixed runway based on your resources maybe you have 18 months or 24 months of runway of sustaining yourself while pursuing this idea right but while you are on the job hold the job on the side you start off okay there are some some very foundational steps you need to take which so i i have probably spoken to about 420 startups in a in a over a period of 18 months right so when we were evaluating for the early seed investments and the constant repetitive theme was amazingly founders started off with the idea the product with the opportunity in multiple ways okay and but the but the but the foundation layer remains the same okay is there a problem solution fit okay uh, is there a problem worth solving if it is is there a fit if there is a fit then there is a is there a product market fit if there is a product market fit uh, uh, what's the customer success metric are you able to uh, re- retain your customers right uh, if you are able to retain customers okay great and uh, how many of them are uh, vocal proponents of your this thing so this you can distill it to a, at a at a very minimal level okay the moment you have in b2b saas startups if you have 10 clients and two cannot stop talking about you you are investment worthy we have talked a lot about work ram and thanks for that let's switch gears and talk a little bit about outside of work because work life balance is pretty important how do you pursue happiness outside of work and what would you advise our viewers on how should they think about work life balance okay so <laughs> um i have i don't think i have been personally successful in you know hitting the right balance uh so but from a de stressing point of view and you know making sure uh you know for me as long as i get to play basketball i'm i'm you know uh, i'm sorted and personally and as long as i get to spend time with my family and kids you know um, that's where i'm sorted and one good thing about uh, being on your own is that uh, it's the other way around right so i make sure i have invested in uh, my family first you know uh, and uh, stress and in the remaining time is when i work uh, just about a year ago for a couple of years uh, i was a full time uh, stay at home father right when the once the pandemic started till the start of this year i got to be um, for the first time you know in my son's life full time taking care of him and uh, that was an amazing journey in itself so uh, that break really helped and uh, what i would recommend of course is uh, this work life balance is a tricky thing right so uh, i um, i think uh, people always prioritize work and then family i think it's, it should be the other way around you prioritize for family first and make sure all the grounds are covered and your stress your sleep is sorted and only then you know work should come into play so anyway you know pretty interesting and it's been sure. lovely chatting with you ram thanks sure. for your time thanks for this it's a pleasure thank you thanks everyone for watching the show i hope uh, you enjoyed the conversation and learned some valuable lessons for yourself My personal favorite is how the world has evolved and rather shrunk with all the new tools and the information technology that we have like Ram said the 6 degrees of separation have probably shrunk down to 1 or 1 and 1/2 with that we'll end the show today and we'll bring another trailblazer in our next episode till then take care and stay tuned